former CBN governor to remain in correctional service custody as attorney general of the Federation meet state attorney generals. Federal government to take decisive step on the nation's primary health center. Good evening and welcome to NCA Jabo Day News at 7. My name is Temidayo Famoyegu. President Bola Tunubu will this Wednesday present to a joint session of the National Assembly the proposed 2024 appropriation bill for consideration and approval. A communication to that effect, read by the President of the Senate, Gatswe Lakpabio, indicates that the President will lay the proposed 2024 budget bill by 11 a.m. Meanwhile, President Tinubu is seeking the approval of the Senate for the abridged 2022-2024 to 2024 external borrowing rolling plan of $8.69 billion and 100 million euros. The amounts are to be deployed to address huge infrastructure deficit for the country's development. I would like to underscore the fact that the projects and programs in the borrowing plan were selected based on positive technical economic evaluations, as well as the expected contribution to the social economic development of the country including employment generation, skills acquisition, support towards the emergence of more entrepreneurs, poverty reduction and food security to improve the livelihood in all the 36 states of the Federation, including the Federal Capital Territory. Considering the huge infrastructural deficit in the country and the enormous financial resources required, to fill the gap in funding infrastructure in the face of dwindling financial resources, it has become imperative that we resort to prudent and external borrowing to bridge the financial gap, which would largely be applied to key infrastructure projects, including power, railway, health, among others. Given the nature of these facilities, and the need to return the country to normalcy, it has become necessary to request the Senate to consider and approve the 2022 to 2024 external abridged borrowing ruling plan to enable the government to deliver its irresponsibility to Nigerians through expeditious disbursement and efficient, efficient project implementation. Similarly, same message was converged to the House of Representatives in writing by President Tinubu that he would present the 2024 appropriation bill to the joint session of the National Assembly on Wednesday by 11 o'clock. This is contained in three separate letters to the House of Representatives, read in plenary by Speaker Tajuddin Abbas. The President has also requested the House to approve the Federal Government's 2022 to 2024 External Borrowing Rolling Plan. The consideration and approval of the loan request by the Green Chamber will enable the Federal Government to obtain a bridge loan facilities of $8.69 billion and 100 million euros from the African Development Bank and the World Bank. The loans, the president said, will be used to finance projects and programs across critical sectors of the economy. Infrastructure deficit in the country and the enormous financial resources required to fill the gap in funding infrastructure in the face of dwindling financial resources. It has become imperative that we resort to prudent external borrowing to bridge the financial gap which will largely be applied the key infrastructure projects, including power, railway, health, among others. The High Court of the Federal Capital Territory has adjourned the trial of the former governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria to January 18, 2024, for the continuation of trial. Godwin Emefile is standing trial on a six count charge bordering on fraud preferred against him by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission due to his inability to perfect his bill. The former CBN governor, Godwin Emefile, will remain in the correctional center for failing to meet the 300 million bill condition. Emefile's counsel, Matthew Boca, son, had secured the application for his bill earlier. Emefile is standing trial before Justice. Amzat Mwazu.
due to the importance that has been attached to the rule of law as the guiding light of the society, attorney generals across the country are meeting to fine tune the process of achieving legal aid and prosecution to the anti corruption fight. This is at the meeting in Abuja with the Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, Latif Fagwe Misan. Holabode Arewa reports. At the inception of the current administration, President Bola Tinubu signed into law the Nigeria Data Protection Act 2023, lending the necessary legal muzzle to safeguard personal and corporate data. Legal practitioners have noted that this law and others, like the Administration of Criminal Justice Act of 2015, are positively adapting the nation's justice system to current social realities. And the General Council of the Bas Meeting is addressing issues associated with deepening ongoing judicial reforms. That issue is the issue of separating the office of the Attorney General and Minister of Justice or the Attorney General and Commissioner of Justice, as the case may be. So as we embark uh, for another round of constitutional amendment, it behoves on this body to come up with the position on whether to separate these two offices. We must also focus on addressing the root causes of crime, poverty, inequality, and social exclusion. Lending his voice to calls for judicial autonomy, Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, Latifa Bimisina Tutus, says a national policy summit on justice is in the offing to streamline the sector's operations. We will, in this regard, seek to examine the current challenges within the justice sector institutions with the objective of supporting critical reforms necessary to build a resilient justice system. The Attorney Generals are positive that with stakeholders' collaboration, justice will be seen to have been served to all. In Abuja, Olabuderewa, NTA News. Every domain and circumstance has inherent advantages, so build synergy with host communities and relevant agents of development to upgrade services in every directorate, zone, and state station to the level of modern broadcasting. Director General of Nigerian Television Authority, NTA, Saliu Abdul Ahmed Dembos, implores management staff of the authority at day two of NTA 2023 management conference and retreat. Joseph Hudson reports. Of this year's NTA management conference had intensive interactions with media experts on strategies that will sustain NTA on top of the media space. On day two, Top ranks of the organization search deep to appraise self. Much successes are recorded with upgrading of production facilities to high definition, provision of modern equipment, and training resulting to improved output by the Director General of NTA, Salih Adu Hamid Dembos, wants the substations to up their games and replicate them. Of the, the establishment of those stations in those states and also at the senatorial levels will be defeated because they need to be communicated in a language that they will understand. They need to also participate as stakeholders. The take home is to fill the pulse of host communities and producing programs that benefit them to attract their commitment to NTA stations across the country. It may not really be the problem of the people outside, but what, what am I supposed to do that I'm not doing? Am I not listening enough? Am I probably listening too much? So those are part of the things I think we're going to look into. As as one of the uh, leading centers of this banditry, as a result of drug abuse, unemployment, lack of proper moral upbringing and rest. Therefore, our focus will now serve as a program to educate the youth. We must have a strong presence online so that uh, especially we carry the youth along. We must provide, continue to provide very good platform for Nigerians to uh, give the government feedback. The 2023 NTA Management Conference rounds up with a communique to serve as a template for one year. In Abuja, Joseph Utsen, NTA News. The federal government says 
Improving health situation is a priority of the present administration by the total upgrade of the over 8,000 primary health centers across the country. Minister of Health Dr. Mohamed Ali Pate stated this during his appearance before the Senate Committee on Health. National Assembly Correspondent Amina Saidu reports. The interactive session focused on medical research development and the need to provide state-of-the-art health facilities that will reduce medical tourism. The coordinating Minister of Health and Social Welfare, Professor Ali Pati, announced plans to expand and upgrade the over 8,000 primary health centers through direct financing. We are revamping the guidelines for training of frontline health workers. Uh, aiming to retrain 120,000 frontline health workers, community health workers, midwives, nurses, so that they are equipped with the standing orders with the right skills and competences to deliver high quality services in the front lines. That will improve the outcomes. Chairman Senate Committee on Health, Dr. Ipalipo Hari Banigo, gave assurance of the National Assembly's support in addressing areas of need in the sector through legislation. The National Health Act of 2014 provides a legislative backup for advancing effective health sector intervention. The Basic Health Care Provision Fund established by the Act is currently being used to improve the capacity of health facilities to deliver health services. However, the in insufficiency of the fund means that its impacts has remained suboptimal. The committee is expected to embark on oversight visits to some health facilities to ascertain the condition as briefed by the minister. From the National Assembly, Amina Saidu, NT News. Checking the stride of gender-based violence to orientation, legislation and enforcement has been subject of discussion for a while now. Bolaja Kim in this report takes a look at the effects of gender-based violence. 18 National Demographic Health Survey shows that 33% of women between 15 to 49 years had experienced physical violence. The figure is on the increase, thereby making gender-based violence one of the most prevalent human rights violations globally. Those stories of gender-based violence are more prevalent among women some men also poor victims. It's not a situation where um, the male person or the man is always attacking or beating up or causing harm on the female person because that is the thing that our people always think of, that it's always the man that is always beating up the woman. We've seen incidences where a woman will beat up a man gender-based violence come with physical and emotional trauma and in some cases death. What are the factors fueling gender-based violence, especially among couples? Is ego. If somebody is not submissive, it's very, very difficult for him or her to, to, to learn or to hear the advice of the other. So women are not always submissive. Some women, let me put it that way, some are not so submissive. When you are cutting, you see the signs, the aggressiveness, the violence. When they see these signs, irrespective of the problem because of desperation or because of uh, they want to belong, they want to be married, they see all these red flags and they still go ahead. Human rights activists believe that for increase in cases of gender-based violence to be addressed, the society, religious leaders, security operatives and government at all levels must intensify sensitization as well as encourage peaceful separation method among warring couples rather than violence which may lead to physical deformity or loss of life. In Lagos, Bolaji Aki, NTA News. We'll be back shortly. Please stay tuned. Take it from me, the mind-blowing way to do things is the Glow LTE advanced way. When you stream, it's like you're in the drama itself. <laughs> when you make calls, you reach where others can. Cookie! Doing business is like running Wall Street from your street. And when you play, I 
a bit to guy. We'll see about that. It's like traveling the world without moving an inch. Is that Toby in your room? You can download in the blink of an eye in 4K. Boom. Oh. And when you go for your dreams, it's like running with the strength of three nations behind you. Glow LTE Advance, the power of three data networks in one. Get a Glow SIM or dial star 301 hash. Welcome back. The National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, says it has put all machineries in motion to have the best of Savicom. You need to attend to its work to its customers. Director General of the agency, Mustafa Abid Ahmed, stated this while declaring open a sensitization training of the SACVICOM units of the agency. Lia Suyakubu reports. of September, when the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, unveiled the SACVICOM service charter for efficient service delivery. The Director General of the agency promised to ensure all necessary support is provided for the unit for outstanding performance. The sensitization training, the DG name has said, is one of such trainings that the Savicom unit will be enjoying to build its capacity. He advised participants to take every bit of the training with seriousness so that the aim of having a world-class Savicom Charter will be achieved in NEMA. The NEMA Savicom Service Charter is a document that defines the parameters of the service delivery we strive to achieve as an organization. It embodies our commitment to provide an efficient and effective emergency management service to all those who rely on us in times of need. NEMA, as an agency responsible for managing emergency and disaster in Nigeria, plays a critical role in safeguarding the lives and well-being of the citizens. In Abuja, Elias Yakubu, NTA News. And here ends the news tonight. My name still remains Temida Ofamoyego. Good night.